Okay, so <clears throat> here we are getting ready to dig into the dragon study from Dragonary 22. This is number two. And you can see just here at the beginning some of the preliminary work that went into prepping this to paint. Now, at this point, I've taken the pencil drawing uh, that, you know, that I did and I scanned that in, brought it into Photoshop and just tinted the, the ground dark, printed this out on archival paper and mounted this to masonite. And that's just saved me a step. Uh, I, I didn't have to redraw, you know, it got me the sketch down to a paintable surface. And of course, this was uh, had a few coats of matte medium over it to protect everything. It's all sealed up. So um, it just saves me from having to redraw the sketch again. So, it, um, and when, and as you'll see, as we move through these, there are several of these. So, you know, I was able to just take a little time to mount these all up at once. And I was then ready to, to move to paint on several of them. So it's a little bit of a time saver. Of course, not necessary at all. You can uh, start these, you know, on a gessoed board and just do the, the, the uh, graphite outline treatment and go from there too. So here with these, uh, you know, I'm using my, warm underpainting palette, which is uh, white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and lamp black. And then a few, you know, a few things mixed from those, uh, more between the white and the burnt sienna, uh, just to give me four or five tones to work with. And with this, uh, my first, you know, my first goal here is to lay in some of the shadows and the darks uh, and this I find that this helps me from uh, having the piece get muddy you know I, I kind of lay in the darks and then the middle tones into that and I blend those together and then the highlights can just be added on top so I'm not mixing the values on the painting so much they're being mixed on the palette and then placed down on the painting next to each other and and being blent together there um, and you can see that the, the burnt sienna especially is a fairly transparent color so it's one that I'll, i will load with uh, a medium like liquid and then glaze it over an entire area i can still see the pencil drawing through that um, which is great for moving forward but it also serves as um, uh, a way to get the dryer and the medium evenly into the piece. So now that everything I paint into this going forward here is going to dry pretty much, you know, in a few hours or definitely overnight. Um, again, you know, it's, it's usually the whites that are the, the slower uh, colors to dry. The earth tones and the browns and things, they tend to dry pretty quickly. And that's just the chemical makeup of the paint itself. Now here you can see I'm sort of starting to pick away at just little details around the face and the eye. I generally feel like the eye is important um, and something that on a piece like this that's a study and is, isn't going to have a developed background um, that, you know, you're kind of making eye contact with the creature. So that's sort of something I like to get a dark in there, establish some contrast in and around the eye so that that kind of tells you where you're looking in the piece. And now again here you can see that as I'm working over this kind of building up the uh, from very transparent into more opaque and, I, and it gets more opaque the more white it gets that's just the 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 pigment choices that I have on the palette now that depends on you know what what paint you're using what color you're using you know that can change a little bit but um, for me this works out pretty good getting in here you can see I lay the base value of the beak in in a darker color and I'll pull highlights out of that but I'm establishing that the local color of that beak is darker than the middle tone of the rest of the little guy and again to get back to the eye um, you know I like I mentioned before that's sort of where I'm going to try and draw the attention or we could call that the focus of this piece so I'm putting, you know, a fair amount of contrast in that area there and also, you know, spending a good amount of time tweaking that little area, too, as opposed to some of the 
other things like the back appendages, the, the arm that's in the back, the wing in the back that we're just kind of getting a glimpse of. Those things can be left a little looser. Now you can see here by taking some of the lamp black and going into the into the white um, in the horns, I'm getting a gray color. So even with this very limited palette, I, I can start to get a sense of different textures and different uh, colors that might be within this little fella. So again, you know, I work my way around with the scales. I'm not trying to create uh, this sort of perfect mathematical pattern. So there's certain areas where I want to kind of pull them out and certain areas where I want them to sort of blend together a little bit more to, to mass together. And you can see now here, I'm starting to get into some of the little wetness in the eye, poking around with that. And at this point, you know, um, most of these, these are all five by seven inches, the painting. So the brushes I'm using, there's about a qu uh, quarter inch flat there. I think it's a number 14 flat. And then I use a, sm a smaller filbert. Uh, that's about a number four, I believe. And then a, a small number two round, along with a few um, little brushes that I use to blend some things together. But those are primarily the brushes that I use to paint this, uh, you know, this way, this size, and in this uh, limited palette like this. I, I don't try and get too fancy with a lot of different brushes. I really only need about three, you know, one to lay them in, one that's sort of a, an intermediate detail, and then the round that is a very sharp pointed little detail that I can get in around the eyes and things. Now, as I work behind this wing, I'm just trying to lay in some value that pull out certain areas. You know, the whole thing has been laid in in the burnt sienna. So the lighter tones and the darker tones, where they go um, is really, really determines where my eye is going to go. And at this point, I was thinking I would do some kind of loose foliage in the background. And uh, you can see that I start to pull out some leaves and a few things there. But um, I really was kind of fighting with this. I, I didn't think this was working that great. So I wind up softening the whole thing down. And this is something that, you know, you, you don't ever want to be afraid of. If you just, if you think something's not working, it's about getting it to the next stage, um, not always taking it right to finish. So just blending that down, I realized that the background didn't need all that information. Um, especially with the way the little guy was painted. So it became more of this out of focus foliage. Um, and, you know, I knew I needed it in a darker value, which you can see that I, that I use here. But that's, uh, you know, something that you can kind of change on the fly with this. Um, with this piece, this was all wet at one time. You know, I did this basically in one sitting. So it was easy to blend back into or to blend over. But you can also see that there's, um, by using the black and some of the uh, burnt umber and white, I get more of a gray tone than the reddish tone from the sienna in the back. So it's just another way to break up visually what, you know, what we wind up with to pull, pull the little guy away from the background.